so it's finally time to do the q and A. I I only selected about like maybe 12 or 15 of the questions so far so we're gonna answer them one by one this is an interesting one because I remember owning the giant uh, purple foxy plush and I was like oh that'll be a cool idea for a character and then when it came to Eric I thought of the idea last second while developing um, Endgame on the original channel if you guys remember that but Eric doesn't use the giant powers anymore because I eventually scrapped the idea because it just doesn't fit anymore and also it was kind of annoying to control the giant plush foxy plushy thing so then I just eventually made him basically like Mason I, that's that was pretty much it Believe me, I really love doing my job as a YouTuber, but my main goal is to just entertain others and show what I can really do. I, I, I enjoy my job. I really do. I, I enjoy doing YouTube, but sometimes it can be a hassle, so it's kind of just a 50-50 thing for me, but I try to have as much fun as I can, really. It's very complicated to answer, honestly, because... I just wanted to do something different for a change, because <clears throat> originally the series was called FNAF Plush, like Series 1, or Season 2, or Season 3, but then when it came to Eternal Nightmare, I felt like that was where everything started coming together, what I wanted to do, so Eternal Nightmare became a full season with um, 45 episodes, and then after that I did Final Curtain, then it just went on and on from there, with Phase 2 coming out, and we are... We're currently on phase two, so it just came out from there, but as for the name of the series, I don't know why I named it that, honestly. It just it just went from there, and then boom, ECU was born. The MCU, that, that's pretty obvious, let's be honest. I really can't say anything because the movie isn't even out yet, and also for Fretching Multiverse Dangerous, no, so I can't really confirm anything. I don't know, that's a hard one to answer, because I didn't really do much, a lot of films for a while, but i say the most fun one was the, probably, um, Francisco movie, honestly. A lot of people will say, like, oh, I thought Rise of the Apocalypse was the funny, fun one. No, it was more of the serious tone, but for Francine, it was a nice breath of fresh air to film something that was kind of funny and actually really simple for one, so... I found the Francisco movie to be the most easiest and the most fun uh, movie I've filmed in a while. Very complicated answer, honestly. Again, I don't know what to do. Uh, <clears throat> I basically dedicated my whole career to the ECU by this point. But I don't know what I'm going to do after Phase 2 is done, because after that, ECU is basically over by that point. It wasn't going to be a permanent series, it wasn't going to be on for years and years to come. I eventually wanted to end it, because I I can't focus on it, really. Because, you know, I want to do other things, I want to uh, up my game a lot when it comes to filmmaking and making a lot of projects and script writing too, because I've gotten into that. <clears throat> So, I don't know, complicated answer, but you guys will still see some content from me, just not ECU stuff. Maybe maybe fan art of the stuff that I've done, or maybe recreations of the scene and art. But other than that, ECU content-wise will probably be over by that point. Definitely Pirates Ahoy. I was so excited to make that, because I was into Pirates for a while, and... Seeing how the ECU was growing by that point, it had a slow pace. I felt like more movies would have been fun to do with the major cast all together. Because that, that was a huge trend, what I was going for, was keeping the main cast together for a lot of the films I was doing. So yeah, Pirates Ahoy was going to be fun to film. I was originally going to do it in a pool where they were actually beyond water. That was going to be really cool, but... I just couldn't figure out how to do that, and I was living in a condo for like seven years of my life, so uh, maybe maybe one day I'll probably get back to the project if I want to. Uh, maybe for the bonus phases, I'll go back and make all the scrap projects I've done, or I don't know, maybe something like that for content-wise, but other than that, I didn't want to scrap Pirates of Hawaii. It looked like it was going to be a lot of fun to film. I've grown to like all the characters I made, honestly. I don't hate all of them, or no love them all, but I really enjoyed um, making Francine's character more um, 
more expanding and uh, more character development for her. Because, like, again, Francisca has been in the shadows for way too long, and, like, she's never been talked about, really. So, with her movie that came out a few months ago, everyone's been talking about her. Everyone's been talking about her. They were, they were saying how much of a good leader she is, or, like, they're discussing how... How, like, if everyone was in the right or the wrong, especially her. That's what I enjoyed most about her character, because people are, like, complimenting her leadership, but they're also questioning if she did the right thing or not until it's later confirmed in the series of what happened. So that's what I really enjoyed about Francine's dynamic as a character and leader of the Francisco Fighters, because everyone can question it, and also they can share their own opinions, and I can tell everyone likes Francine. They, they love her as a character. I've seen a lot of people love her, and... You know, she's probably one of the more, you know, charm, charming, chill characters that are, that's just really fun. I mean, it's pretty obvious that I enjoyed making Rise of the Apocalypse. Uh, I think what was fun about it is because I was really to go all out with the project I was confident about. I didn't go all out with the reboot films, so that's probably why they all sucked, because I didn't care about them. But when it came to Rise of the Apocalypse, I was so confident to do so much with it that it turned out really amazing but i can definitely see the criticisms people had on the movie and i wish it could have been better honestly but it was the more fun and probably the longest films i've ever done with a runtime of one hour and 53 minutes uh battle of the multiverse is going to be a blast to do because i'm going really all out with that project I even started writing the script right now. I'm currently doing that just so I can prepare myself for what I'm about to deal with and probably overcome the greatest challenge I've ever had. I remember um, when doing the art styles, I took a lot of inspiration from Tony Crynite, uh, probably one of my favorite animators from uh, the 2010s. Like probably like in the early 2010s when FNAF was like a thing and then it was like a huge thing. So. I mainly based it off of that, but then when I started changing the character designs, the second phase of that style was probably my, mainly my inspiration because I gave the characters more stylistic in the fur hair on top, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, the eye color. It just mainly became there and then I started to implement them into more like a comic book style um, character designs. So it just mainly went from Tony Cry and I too, then just doing my own thing basically. So that's pretty much how the art style uh, basically evolved from the past few years and I'm really proud of myself. So this is really the only time I'm going to say this, but Battle of the Multiverse will have crossovers. Um, I'm not going to say what, uh, clearly, I'm not going to say what crossovers will be planned, but Battle of the Multiverse is going to be the biggest project of my life and I wanted to be an ultimate crossover film, just like small cameos or just um, probably just references to other stuff uh if, if the crossover doesn't work out well i'll talk i'll probably just green screen the characters into frame and it'll probably go off from there but other than that battle of the multiverse will be the like a big crossover movie but it's not going to be major just small cameos or references to stuff movies wise that i hated definitely the reboots i hated them i didn't hate them at first but now i hate them Episodes wise, probably the Nightmare Foxy episode. I hated that one. <laughs> we can all agree on that. Uh, movies that I'm proud of Rise of the Apocalypse. Uh, basically, most of the Phase 2 movies that I'm really proud of, making, especially Bernie and Lily, that's coming out very soon. Um, movies, uh, no, episodes that I loved, it was definitely the emotional hit ones. Those are really good. I'm proud of those. I'm proud of that people actually felt the emotion of those characters and i'm really proud of them so yeah all right so that was my last question for the day um it was a lot of fun to make this i'm glad to finally answer some of the questions people had and share my personal opinions on a lot of the stuff that people were asking me about i'll probably do this again pretty soon you know, pretty much all month i'm going to be busy with a lot of stuff especially with um finals coming up for school because end of semester is coming up so and then I'll probably, winter break is when I'll probably get started on filming Frederick Multiverse Dangerous and get some stuff ready, so 
Uh, I'll be busy pretty much all month, but you guys are welcome to send me more of those questions, and I'll try to do the best I can to get those done. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys a lot had, had a lot of fun with this, and I sure did, too. It was fun to actually answer some of the questions and finally do a Q&A for once. <laughs> all right, uh, so, yeah, hope you guys had fun.